Heard some big movie news drop today. Technically, you saw some movie news. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was no comment that went with it. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I don't even know if people who are not sort of on the inside even know what the, the image means completely. Right? It's uh, it's the cover to a completed uh, draft of, of a script that we've been waiting. I've been waiting for, for everybody been waiting for, for a long, long time. Right. So that's, that's what that means. But again, those of us in no Hollywood people go, Oh my gosh, a, a script, a script is done. A, a draft is, is completed. Right. <laughs> uh, but yes. Uh, and, and I think it's the piece that again, it's part of the process that I understand that sort of been frustrating for lots of the fans, myself included, um, of the amount of time, but you can't sell your project unless you got a script going with it. That was always the plan, mm -hmm. you know, well now we've got our draft, you know, uh, and, and that allows us to now accelerate having the conversation of moving forward and selling it. So, so, uh, what was your immediate reaction to reading Scott's script? And, and what do you feel like is most different about this version of the script compared to maybe previous drafts? Well, the, the previous draft was mine. <laughs> so uh, I, I took a crack at it, um, completed it, uh, showed it to a few people, couldn't quite, quite get people excited about my version of it. Um, but the, uh, you know, bringing on Scott and Malcolm and Matt, uh, and, and, and everybody else on the team that the goal was to try and take a big swing and try and, and do something different. Um, and, um, it's, it's interesting. I was talking to Scott Silver the other day and, uh, I thought he made a interesting comment of he's going, you know, there's, there's, Marvel movies and there's DC movies. I want this to be an image comic movie, right? Now I didn't get him to define that, <laughs> but in his mind, you know, the separation. Look, we we know that if you're going to be doing something on a you know a smaller budget, that it doesn't make any sense to try and do the same thing at a fraction of the cost. It doesn't make any sense. You, you know, I've, I've been talking about it forever, right? I, it, that's a fool's game, I think, on anybody trying to trying to emulate uh, what Marvel and DC do with their big budget. So we have to, the goal is, the intent of everybody is to try and come up with an angle, a story, a movie, a look that feels like it's its own. Um, and and the, right now, everybody sort of understands that we're going for that direction and everybody's enthusiastic about that direction. Uh, and and we'll see. I mean, we're, we're, we're acknowledging, and it's what I've talked about before, Chris, that we're just acknowledging that the audience is getting older and, and we have to sort of, at least we felt with this script, we have to acknowledge that, that the audience is adult. Right. And that means we don't have to worry about, you know, selling t-shirts and hats and toys and ancillary and what, like, let's just make, let's just make a movie that movie goers will enjoy and, and go from there. And so far, Everybody is seeing, I mean, you know, we're biased. Everybody who's on any product is, is biased to their own project. We like, we, we like what we're doing. Right. And, and hopefully in, in short order, uh, we can sell it now and, uh, and then, and then show people and we'll get the, the audience's reaction, both the fans and, and worldwide moviegoers. Right. Well, I think the big surprise today was that the, the script is actually titled King Spawn. So will this be an adaptation of that comic? No. So if this is an all new original story, what was the what was the thought process behind calling it King Spawn? 
I, uh, I try, it's probably just a working title. <laughs> I don't know about that. Ask, ask Scott. I think, I think it's cool. It's strong. I, it, really, the thing is, is that it was a way for us to say that we're not just going to emulate like the past. And uh, he felt by just calling it Spawn, plain old Spawn, that it, it, would, it would sort of go, oh, this is just a reboot. And, right. and the repeat. So um, don't know if that'd be the final title or whatever. You have to clear things and let go and all those other things, but it was just a way to, 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 se- to separate it, to just, at least for us internally, just to right. say, Hey, this is, this is our version uh, that, that is different from the one decades ago. Yeah, well, I mean, even for the, for the comic books, for example, right. In the original spawn title, I, I would say that spawn is like, much more of a comic book anti-hero, but King Spawn leans a lot more into like the horror aesthetic. So does, is that sort of what it was going for? It was just like, how scary do you feel like Scott's script is? Uh, it's, 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 a, it's pretty harsh. Um, uh, in a lot of, but I, I, not, not necessarily in terms of horror per se, just in terms of the tonality. Right. I mean, we're there, we were all in agreement that we wanted to go, and do something that was mature and sophisticated uh, that would be sort of real good drama uh, and, and have great visuals go with it uh, that people would uh, be absorbed in too. So uh, yeah, that, it, 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 I remember, it, you know, I, I sort of had my vision of the small budgeted movie, sort of dark horror, whatever else. Uh, and then everybody sort of saw that and then they, they given their sort of iteration of that, given that I probably peeled back the, the hell spawn part, maybe more than they, they, they liked, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe they're, they're fans too, Chris, but th- what, what we will, I mean, it, again, it's, it will be a, there will be no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? S- surprise! It's R. I mean, it's a R. It's a heavy R movie, uh, and and I don't say because it's going to be tons of cursing or naked people. I'm just saying in in terms of the world we're about to present, mm-hmm. right? And and we want to make sure that we we sort of paint our own mythology here, and then. And then we'll be able to literally, hopefully, cut loose for years to come. But we've got to lay, we've got to lay the tracks down right. uh, on on what everybody is dealing with and what the characters are all doing. I, I've gotten wise with Hollywood of knowing uh, that that schedules. Even, I mean, we got to, we got to find a director, right? I mean, now you have a, a script. We also have to find a director. So we'll, we'll that'll probably be the next move we make is to is to attach the final piece. Uh, of, of this, we have, you know, a lot of the components uh, in place. And then, and then we walk into uh, Hollywood and, you know, see where their heads at. By next Monday, uh, there should be big data out there with the uh, Deadpool Wolverine saying that you can do R-rated comic book movies. And then as we've talked about, um, a few months after that, there's going to be Joker two. That's going to give them even more data, the city, more data. Right. And so whether we're in their offices, you know, just before or just after, uh, New York comic con, which is when the Joker two comes out, we'll see it. Uh, but we're, we, we cross, and I know it's frustrating for people, but, but having a script is a giant hurdle to get over. And we're over the weight of that piece is there. Now it's just putting a couple of different pieces together and let's, let's see what the executives in Hollywood think about it. Uh, I'm not expecting you to name any names, but are, are there directors that you and Blum have in mind to sort of that you are hoping to get attached to this? Uh, we've had conversation. I've, I've, I've probably had more conversations with Scott Silver because he's the one that's, you know, and, 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 and Malcolm, the, the writers that are envisioning what it looks like on paper. And uh, we, so we've got 
a list of people. But it, it, I, again, Chris, you, you can go to your favorite guy and then they say, oh, man, he just signed on to a movie two weeks ago. <laughs> so uh, there's there's always uh, sometimes you 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 start at the top and it's not that they say no because they don't like it, which uh, is possible. But there's also no because they're busy. But we'll we'll have our hit list for sure. Right. It's not going to be it's not going to be an insignificant budget. Right. So uh, it won't be massive. But it's not going to be insignificant. So, again, you know, we, we're, we're, we're going to be leaning towards directors that have worked in that kind of budget area and are great more than anything else are great storytellers and, 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 you know, know how to work in, in the camera so that people are gross in their films. So, and, and luckily there's a lot of talent in Hollywood on that front. Right. I mean, there's a lot of directors and, and cinematographers that are, that are unbelievable. So we'll, I mean, I, I, I get to sign off on them, so I'm 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 going to be pretty stubborn on that part of it because uh, I have a vision in my head of what it should look like too. So we'll all sort of put our heads together and come up with hopefully the person that will be an additive to the project, so that the studios get even more excited, right? Because mm -hmm. because if the studios feel confident that they got a team that they can just say go. Like go, right? Shoot, here we go. We bought it. Now go. That's that'll just speed up all of this that much faster.